Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, here to tell you about a toy company and their toy lines that you probably didn't know about. That toy company was called Durham Toys. Now, this is a toy company mostly forgotten by kids that grew up in the 70s and even us adult collectors today. We all know names like Mattel, Hasbro, Kenner, Mego, and even some of us know names like Remco and Fleetwood. But few of us can tell you anything about Durham Toys. With only seven action figure lines from the late 70s to the early 80s, they made their mark on the toy world, not with just generic ripoff toys, but with major licensed toys also. Their first outing in the action figure market was 1975, with the release of two characters in Mego style from the television show MASH, one of the first toy lines from a TV show that was really aimed for a more mature audience. They released Hawkeye and Hot Lips herself, Margaret, also released in this line would be two match vehicles, Hawkeye on a motorcycle that could pop wheelies, and a MASH helicopter. Both the figures and the vehicle sold poorly, and Durham dropped the MASH line. Durham figures today are extremely rare, and even some of the MASH collectors don't even know they exist. But Durham wasn't too worried, because at this time, they had the rights to one of the biggest names in children entertainment, Disney. Most of the 70s, Durham would release a slew of Mickey Mouse related toys, from cheap rack style toys, to a Mickey Mouse doll toy line that saw Mickey Mouse with many different outfits. They also released a line of small Mickey Mouse plastic action figures that featured Mickey Mouse and some of the supporting characters. Around the same time, Duran was trying to sell toys to a dying breed of children. That was young kids between 7 and 8 that were still buying cowboy toys. Cowboys are what all boys wanted to play as and play with back in the 50s and the 60s, but the 70s pushed out the cowboy toys with the release of comic book superhero toys, space themed toys, and aliens. But Dunham knew there was a market for some kids, as a few other toy companies were still having success with cowboy toys, like Johnny West from Mark. Dunham released Gunslingers, based on real cowboys from the Old West. You had Billy the Kid, Wild Bill Hickok, and Wyatt Earp. Sadly, the line couldn't reach the numbers it wanted, and it was canceled within the first year of release. Then, in 1978, Dunham did something a little different than most toy companies. They would release a line of action figures, using their own names as the brand name for the toys. This would be like Mego releasing a line of action figures called Migos. And this action figure line was really a step down for the toy company, as they were not only cheaply made, they looked cheap, and it was clear to even small little kids, these were based on other licensed toys, and Durnham was just trying to cash in. They had Cycle Cop because Chips was a big television show. They had Kung Fu Fighter to get the fans of the Kung Fu TV series, and Daredevil Racer was without a doubt a clear ripoff of Evil Knievel. There was other basic figures in this line. That same year, they released a line of Bendham figures entitled Posables, who were mostly based on classic movie monsters like Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and Dracula. Also in the line was a cowboy, and an almost racist by today's standards, Mexican Wrangler. As their deal with Disney came to an end, they picked up another major name in the toy business, and that was Marvel, for toys based on Spider-Man and Hulk. These were mostly cheap gimmick-like toys, such as Hulk and Spider-Man clingers that kids could hook to their clothes, hair, or whatever. There was also a wind-up toy of the two heroes and two wind-up swimming figures, the Backstroke Hulk and the Deep Dive Spider-Man. As the 1980s started, Durham would make a deal to release Popeye toys. This was a great time for the company as Robin Williams was starring in a live-action movie that same year. Durham released three different 3D bookmarks for the reading kids. They would also release two wind-up walkers and three small plastic figures. There is another action figure line that is somewhat of a mystery, as no one can really pinpoint the year of a release. Some say it was the late 70s, but some have it credited as being more of the mid-80s. This was a line of wind-up soldiers called Climbing Commandos. Only three figures would be released, and they're almost impossible to find a date. It's even hard to find photos of these online. My opinion is these were released either in the very late 70s or very early 80s, as this was a time period where Durnham seemed to be releasing everything with a wind-up feature. But after all this, Durnham would disappear into obscurity and almost be forgotten in the toy market. And that's a look at the toy lines from Durnham. Let me know, did you have any of these? Some of them don't look that bad. I kind of like the knockoff Evil Knievel. Let me know which ones you had, which ones you liked, or which ones you thought was just really too far out there. Well, I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up, turn to like my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon.
<laughs> hey, jump man <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs> <laughs>